Hey church, it's Pastor Anthony. I'm excited to bring a word uh, for you guys today. I'll be preaching um, on the life of Peter. Um, and my message is really about dealing with what comes up. You know, this is a season where a lot of things are being surfaced, good and not so great. When things are getting more challenging, what is inside rises up to the surface. But I would say that one of the greatest gifts of this season is the revealing of what is going on inside us. The life of Peter is a great example of the issues of the heart rising to the surface and how this wasn't easy to navigate for Peter. But he came through it and he finished well, just as all of us desire to do. We all desire to finish well. And on the way there, things have a way of coming up that can either stifle us or strengthen us. And I would say that the determining factor between stifling and strengthening really is our decision to allow God to deal with that thing versus grabbing that shovel, finding as much dirt as we can to pile that thing back up and have it be covered up again. You know, there's this tendency as humans to want to, cover up things that, that pop up. Whenever we have things that show their face and, uh, and, they, and they surface, there's this tendency that we want to cover them up right away and restore normalcy in our lives. But that said, if we can change our perspective, we can see that what God is actually doing when he's uncovering something, he's dealing with it. You know, there's a dealing with it that actually is returning us to how he originally intended us to walk with him in the garden, completely uncovered and unashamed. In one way or another, we are being brought through this place of God dealing with what comes up to the surface. But it is in our best interest, our wisest choices to allow God to Help us deal with that by walking through it with him. Seeing things from God's perspective and trusting God's ability to deal with what comes up. Tap your neighbor wherever you are and say he can deal with it. You know, as I was walking around my neighborhood preparing this message, I uh, walked by a utility box that said, caution, buried power cable. And I just, you know, sometimes God will just do that with me. He'll just plant a sign and say, ha, here you go. And as I was writing about this place of burying, I see this, this sign that says buried power cable. When we bury the issues that raise up to the surface, we also are burying the power that God has for us through allowing him to walk with us as it surfaces. So... You know, the whole term of walking with God, in Christian circles, uh, we, we hear that a lot. How's your walk, brother? Hey, brother, how's your walk? You know, but many times when we say something uh, so often, we can forget the meaning of what it is actually saying. When we say yes to following Jesus, we begin a walk with Jesus that continues throughout our life. Right now, even if you're sitting down watching this, you are walking with Jesus. It says in Matthew 28, 20, Jesus said that he would be with us until the end of the age or the end of the world or of time. He also told us in John 16, to be of good cheer, not because we won't face trials, we actually will, but to be cheerful, to take heart because Jesus has overcome the world. We can have confidence because the one we walk with has overcome the world. You know, no matter what you guys are walking through right now, one of the greatest encouragements we have as believers is that God walks with us in our life. That's a day by day. No matter what we face, we know that God is with us. One of my favorite uh, chapters in Psalms is Psalms 23. And it says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will not fear because you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. 
No matter the setting or environment or situation we have to walk through, regardless of the bleakness or the depth of the shadows of death, it won't produce fear in us. Why? Why won't that produce fear in you? It's supposed to produce fear in you. Based on the facts and the details, it's a natural response to fear, right? You see, there is this dialogue that happens that slowly rationalizes conversations with fear to get us to suddenly accept it in our thought process. This subtle adapt, adoption of fear comes in, but that isn't our thought process as believers. As David says in Psalm 23, 4, I will not fear because your rod and your staff, they comfort me. The strength, protection, and care of our shepherd is our comfort. As we remove our source of comfort from what our circumstances provide. So for instance, if everything's going well, if, if I can pay the bills, if, um, if I can uh, provide for my family, if I can watch a few shows in the week, if I can get my time to relax, then I'll be fine. That's the type of uh, mindset that God's shifting us out of. We're moving from a place of our source of comfort being based in our circumstances and back into the hands of our shepherd. We engage the types of courage in this place when we put it back on God, when God becomes our comfort. We engage the type of courage and peace that we only can get when we satisfy ourselves solely with walking with God communing with him, having him be our ultimate source. We can be confident in this. Jesus is with us. He will be with us till the end of the age. We will have troubles, yeah, but we can take heart because Jesus has overcome the world. We will walk through things, but we can be comforted by our shepherd's power and protection and keep our trust in his guidance. You know, we're in a time right now where we no longer need circumstances to be our assurance of whether or not we are walking with God. But that our walking with God would change how we consider our circumstances. Our relationship with the Lord becomes the thermostat in the environment. We change how the environment actually exists because our ultimate reality is really us walking with God. You know, Peter learned this the hard way, I would say, diving into his life. In Matthew 16, 21 to 22, it says, From that time on, Jesus began to explain to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things at the hands of the elders, the chief priests and the teachers of the law, and that he must be killed on the third day be, and on the third day be raised to life. Peter took him aside. <laughs> Hold up. Peter what? <laughs> Peter took Jesus aside. Hey, Jesus, let me, just, let me just take you aside. And began to rebuke him. Never, Lord, he said, that shall never happen to you. Jesus' response to Peter Jesus returned, or turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me. You do not have in mind the concerns of God, but merely human concerns. Matthew 16, 23. Peter was rebuked and even called out for partnering with Satan for having merely human concerns and not the concerns of God. It's important to note that human concerns are not the same as the concerns of God. They're just not the same. Oftentimes they're on different trajectories. And anytime we exalt our circumstances or our situation or our concerns over the concerns of God, we put ourselves in the same position that Peter was in when he was rebuked by Jesus. Jesus unpacked this a little bit for his disciples. He said, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for me will find it. 
You know, I recently was asked by um, some new parents uh, to give advice on what it would be like to be a new parent. They had uh, good friends of ours have a 15-month-old. And at first I said, well, you know, I'm not really the expert on parenting. Um, I only have two children. But I thought about it and I said, okay, let me think. And my response was this, get comfortable dying. (laughs) You know, I shared uh, this with them and I definitely unpacked that statement a bit. And I shared a story about how when I was first married, I laid on the bed talking to my wife and I said, babe, I don't have a pickup truck anymore. (laughs) Babe, I missed my cell phone plan with (laughs) AT&T. Babe, babe. I was mourning my single life. I was, I was thinking about all of these things that I lost from this previous life. And I, and I really was, in a sense, having a dying happen. My, life, my wife, being real gracious, was like, you know, there for me. And she listened. God bless you, Rebecca. I have an amazing wife. Come on. Go ahead and put it in the comments. If you know my wife, that's right. She's amazing. Okay. But I then shared with the couple that asked me for the advice how on the other side of that death was an incredible amount of life that has only grown as we have had children. You know, I've seen things that I could only dream of, and now I've had reality kind of exceed my dreams. You know, there have been all types of dying that I have and am definitely still learning to embrace, you know, and in the death of our own uh, way of doing things, we gain exponential returns on the other side. Ironically, you know, uh, I don't think it was a coincidence that Jesus, when he was talking with Peter, was actually talking about the very topic that Jesus rebuked Peter on was that the subject of him laying his life down. We as humans often struggle to lay down our lives, but it is this very act of obedience, of obedience that leads us to true life. You know, Philippians 2, uh, 5 to 8 says, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of men and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Jesus' life models this whole teaching of laying your life down, but it also models the infinite return of on the other side of laying your life down. Going back to this place of things being stirred up in our lives, kind of diving back into the life of Peter. So we just unpacked his experience of rebuking Jesus, and we see how, how well that went. But Peter also, in the next chapter, had an experience on the mountain with Jesus where he tried to school Jesus on what they should do to set temples up there after him seeing the transfiguration. In the midst of his, like, sales pitch for Jesus, come on, sales pitching for Jesus. That Anybody remember skating for Jesus? That's right. All right. Sorry. But... That sales pitch for Jesus, the father booms from heaven and says, this is my son in whom I'm well pleased. Listen to him. Peter was on the ground trembling, totally just shook up from that. And Jesus told trembling Peter, get up, don't be afraid. Peter looks up and he just sees Jesus there. You know, we also know the tragic night of Christ's betrayal and Peter's denial of Jesus three times. 
You know, we can look at this track record and think, this isn't going to end well. That same voice that says, why would you not be afraid? You should be afraid. You're walking through the valley of the shadow of death. Of course you're going to be fearful. If we come along that same log- logic, we're going to think, these circumstances look bleak for Peter. Peter should just probably throw in the towel. He's, he's not going to make it. But that isn't the outcome that we see. When we estimate things from a human concern, we miss the wonder and awe of God that is happening right in front of us. This place of stewarding what comes up, dealing with what comes to the surface, is perfectly portrayed as Jesus walks Peter through restoration in John 21. Jesus addresses Peter and walks him through a process of professing his love for Jesus. Jesus says, do you love me, Simon? Do you love me, Simon Barjona? Do you love me, Peter? And in this place, he actually walks Peter through the process of Peter professing and confessing his love in the same place where he had denied Jesus. He professed his love three times where he denied him three times prior. Each time confessing his love for Jesus. Jesus walks Peter through the professing, the process of dealing with this betrayal of Jesus. He does it by asking him questions that portray what is really inside of him. You know, Jesus knows what's really inside of us. And he's pulling out the gold. So I just want to encourage you, as you have stuff that's messy, that's rising up to the surface, just like Peter, know this. God sees who you really are, and he sees the gold. And he's asking the right questions. He's causing those things to come up to the surface. Finally, he caps it off by prophesying some of the things that Peter will face. And and then finally says, Peter follow me. This place of restoring wasn't something that Peter necessarily pursued. Jesus pursued him and walked him through the process and restored him to a place where he could get back on his feet and continue to follow Jesus. Stepping into the pain with us and walking us through it as we yield to his promptings, that's what it looks like to walk with Jesus and allow him to restore us in that place. So let's be honest. Our lives can be messy. Peter's life was messy. He had stuff bubbling up to the surface left and right. But look how he turned out. In Acts 2.41, Peter preaches his first sermon and 3,000 people give their life to the Lord. In Acts 3, 6. Peter heals the man who is crippled from birth and tells him silver and gold I do not have, but in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. And in Acts 9.40, Peter raises Tabitha from the dead. Peter's life is a great display that no matter how messy things get or what gets stirred up, when we walk with God, he helps us to deal with, with what comes up. Whether we need to be rebuked, come on, some of us sometimes just need a good old-fashioned rebuke. Told to, you know, maybe we need to be told to get up and look at Jesus, to fear not. Or maybe Jesus is specifically restoring us in the areas where we have fallen short. We know that Jesus will be with us and he walks with us. Our job is to not make our life look less messy. Go ahead and put that in your comments right now. Our job is not to make our life look less messy, to bury what comes up to the surface so that no one will see the stuff we have going on. Our job, our assignment, our call in this life is to walk with Jesus to trust him as things come to the surface and ultimately trust him to perfect us as we grow in our walk with him. 
we are all be, being awakened to our identity and destiny in Jesus Christ. This is the process of walking it out with God and allowing him to walk through us as we trust him. So no matter where you are right now, maybe this is stirring things up in your heart and you're saying, yeah, but I just don't know how. I just don't know how to stay in it. Well, I want to encourage you. There's something called the fruit of the Spirit. And it's a free thing that happens inside of you when you say yes to Jesus. And one of the most amazing, I mean, they're all amazing, but specifically in this case, a really solid weapon that we use in our ability to walk with God through hard things is the fruit of the Spirit called long-suffering. We have in us grace that is given to us to endure through hard things. And I just want to encourage you, you can do it. You can walk through hard things. And as the heat's rising, you might feel it in this season. You might feel like you're being beaten down and the pressure's too hot. But just like an iron in the fire that's being beaten down, once it gets pulled out of the fire and pulled into that cold water, the, the blacksmith gets to look at what was just created and it gets to marvel. And I promise you this, you're going to get through this season. No matter what season you're in right now, you're going to get through this season. And on the other side, you're going to look back and you're going to see all that God formed in you in this season. I believe that for the body of Christ, we are literally going through a season that we will look at as if we were looking at a tree stump with those rings around the tree that would mark, wow, that was a year of true growth and things rising up. I believe that there's things being stirred up in your life right now that will shape the days to come, just like Peter, who was willing to let these things come up to the surface, who was messy. He I, the way I see Peter, I just think he just kind of was like, I, I am who I am. And I think honestly, we as believers, we need to get more comfortable being who we are and being honest before the Lord because he can rebuke us. He can cause us to, to uh, look at him and change our perspective. But he can't cause us to continue to walk with him. That's our job. That's our assignment. So I just want to encourage you, no matter where you are, just trust that he's with you. He won't ever leave you or forsake you. And even when you walk through hard times, take heart, be of good cheer because he has overcome the world. So as you, as you walk in your journey, know that he's preparing you for amazing things and you will finish well. You will look back and see something fashioned out of this season. And so let me just uh, pray for you. So, Father, I just, I thank you. I thank you for all of those that are watching. I thank you, God, even for the seasons that we're walking through that are hard, that bring about the heat. You know, we can't manufacture heat in our life. These seasons sometimes just come. But when they come, we can choose how we respond. And I just pray, Lord, that you would give us an awareness of the patience the long suffering that you've given us to stay in it, knowing that the enemy doesn't have any long suffering. He doesn't have any patience. And so we can just sit there and stand in your presence and prepare for an unleashing of who we are on the earth, that thousands would be led to you, that people would be healed, that people would be raised from the dead and that we would finish well, that we would look back at the end of the race and say, wow, I stayed in it. I just want to encourage you guys to stay in it. God will never leave you and he's got way more for you than you could ever ask or think or imagine. God bless you.